Welcome back to the Vegas Take, Sharp and Shapiro. So glad you could join us, man. What a great guest, Real Kid Poker, Danny Negreanu is. He is just absolutely awesome, and uh, we appreciate him taking some time to join us. So we talked a little bit about golf with Danny Negreanu, even though he's a you know world world class poker player. And as you know, Sisolak put in effect the other day, I believe it was yesterday actually, that uh, public golf courses have to close. So what does that mean about country clubs? A lot of people feel. Like, if public courses are closed, country clubs should be closed as well. Well, we have a guy by the name of Forrest Richardson on the line. He's the vice president of American Society of Golf Course Architects, and he takes the other side of this. He thinks private golf courses should remain open. Forrest, I appreciate you coming on. How are you? Fine. Happy to be here. Hope you're all safe and well up there. I assume you are. Yeah, we are. And listen, let me be the first one to say I played college golf. I love golf. In fact, I was supposed to play today, not at a private course, at a public course. And they shut down. What would you say to the people out there that think if public courses are going to be shut down, all country clubs should be shut down? What would you say to that? Well, I think, you know, first of all, golf is a 500-year-old sport. It's served as a tremendous uh, reprieve during all sorts of world conflicts and crises. Uh, And I, I think that if it can be safely managed, which it can, then golf courses deserve to be open, whether public or private. And I actually think that in some ways uh, it's the hardworking citizen of Nevada or Arizona or New York or whatever that deserves recreation opportunities during a time like this. And so the public course is closing. Traditionally, they're serving more people. And traditionally, they're serving them at a at a price point that more of us can enjoy. So I think it's a real shame. Uh, and unfortunately, I think a lot of this is because golf gets lumped in with other recreation, and it's, it's not comparing apples to uh, apples. So what would you say to Governor Sisolak, and why do you think he put this into effect? Do you think he just doesn't understand golf? And let's be honest here. When you're out there playing golf, you don't have to be close to one another. But if you're in the same cart as somebody else, you're a foot away from them. So explain that dynamic because you're not always going to be six feet away from somebody. Now, if you're playing yourself, obviously you're not around anybody. But if you're playing with someone else and you're in the same cart, you are going to be, you know, within that that six feet parameter, right? Well, the, the way that the National Golf Course owners and other organizations have put in best practices during this crisis is single rider carts are preferred. Obviously, if you're a couple or husband and wife and you're in the same house and you're together anyway, then there there have been exceptions made that you can ride in the same cart. But in general, the policy is single rider carts or walking, keeping 10 feet or more uh, spacing. Uh, Keep in mind, in golf, people use their own equipment, so it's the only game where you have your own equipment and each player is assigned an individual ball. So it's it's unlike tennis, it's unlike volleyball, it's unlike uh, baseball, it's unlike any other sport, and it's very unique for that reason. And also in golf, we route the golf course, and we have ways to route that golf course so that you're not doubling back and you're not introducing people. You're on a hiking trail right behind my house here in Phoenix, Arizona, there's a hiking trail, and I think it should be open, but I think it would be better if they had it going in one direction rather than two directions because I see people passing each other, you know, two, three feet apart. In golf, we don't have that situation, and and you asked if the governor doesn't know your governor. I don't know. I, 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 I hope that governors and policymakers are doing the right thing. I do think that two things are happening with golf. It's getting lumped in with playgrounds and beaches and lakes and and parks where people do congregate and they're close together that's one problem and i think you're right sometimes the policymakers might not understand how golf is organized as a playing board so forrest i would put this out there and i want to get your thoughts on it i don't think it's necessarily about social distancing guidelines or about you know actual reality about what happens out there because think about it when you're playing golf a sport like that you know you're much more at risk if you're doing things that say for example going to the grocery store going to a 7-eleven going to a gas station you're absolutely much more at risk doing those things don't you think it's not necessarily about social distancing guidelines or those types of aspects but it's more about determining 
whether or not golf is considered essential or non-essential in society. That's really what the debate has become. Well, golf courses are the lungs of our society. I mean, they're, they're one of the very few large-scale open spaces that produces oxygen, and, and the people that are using it are sustaining it from a financial point of view. In other words, generally speaking, the users of golf courses are paying the freight for those 100, 200-acre parks, if you will, to, to remain open. Uh, it's not the taxpayers generally. It's the people using it. I think you're you're exactly right. I mean, I during during my uh, self-imposed um, you know stay at home here in Arizona, I've been to the pharmacy. Yeah. I've been to get takeout food. I've been to the grocery store. I've been to Costco. I've you know been a few other places where I've quote unquote had to go. I've also taken walks in my neighborhood and taken walks in the desert. And and I think that golf has a much better opportunity to self-police and manage itself as my local grocery store, as an example. I mean, I, I go into the grocery store and there's signs about, you know, standing where the tape is on the floor, not, you know, being with each other. But let's face it, when I go to the grocery store, the, wide, the, the aisles are about six feet wide. And how in the world can you possibly uh, police that in a grocery store? They don't have employees for every aisle. Whereas in golf, if it's managed right, my position is that courses should be given an opportunity to remain open because exercise, and, and let's face it, social interaction with people doesn't have to happen uh, two feet apart or three feet apart. We can, we can actually social interact on a golf course and be 10 feet or more apart. And, uh, and, and if, it's, if it's handled right, I mean, if the people are responsible, but... I think you have more of an opportunity on a golf course than you might in your average grocery store or convenience mart. So you touched on this a bit, but, but exercise, you look at this virus, and it adversely affects the elderly. We're talking 65 up to, we'll call it 85 plus. But when you're not able to go on a golf course and exercise, because I mean, absolutely going on a golf course and playing 18 holes of golf is considered exercise. Isn't it kind of counterintuitive to to not allow the elderly and not just but really anyone but a lot of but a lot of elderly people do play golf, but isn't it kind of kind of counterintuitive if you're trying to protect them from this virus to not allow them to exercise in a situation like a golf course? I my position is that it's it's um, it's a shame. You know, I mean, I understand if if people are not. Uh, if the golf course isn't being managed right, that's one thing. But if they have policies in play uh, and in effect to prevent you from taking the flag stick out and from social distancing, um, I've even heard of a few courses where they only allow two people off and they put spacing between the holes. I mean, imagine in a supermarket, for example, if if a supermarket was set up that you could only go one direction down an aisle and you had to start in the vegetable section and you had to go here and then here and then here and then here, that might be making supermarkets safer. Well, guess what? That's how golf courses are laid out. That's how we, the golf course architects lay them out. You go from here to here to here, and you're spaced. Yeah. The game and the way they're managed, they're already spaced. So I, I think yeah. it's the perfect no, it's outdoor recreation to to for this yeah. crisis, and it gives people an opportunity to get out of the house, you know, and, and yeah. not yep. and get away from social media and whatever. Yeah, you make very valid points there. For just joining us, we're speaking with Forrest Richardson, the vice president of American Society of Golf Course Architects. It was our governor, Steve Sisolak, that said uh, public golf courses need to be closed. There are some private golf courses that are closing as well. Some still remain to be open. All right, I want you to react to this. The Michigan Attorney General, her name is Dana Nessel. She said something on Twitter yesterday, Forrest, that I think is utterly disgusting, but I want you to react to it. Here's what she said about her state. She said, quote, I just can't hear about one more black health care worker, police officer, or bus driver die while getting a barrage of complaints from white folks outraged because they can't go golfing. She's received a lot of criticism for that comment. What do you say? Well, it's, it's, um, I, I don't know her, and uh, certainly my, my inclination would be to respect people. But what I will say is 
that is an uninformed individual who doesn't realize that 80 to 85 percent of the rounds of golf played in the United States are played by hard-working, blue-collar individuals, families, retirees who are not among the wealthy, and I can tell you without any hesitation that they are not just white. They are people of all colors and all races and all uh, backgrounds and social, uh, you know, income demographics. And and, and it's a shame to me that, um, and this is a problem that golf has, which may be another conversation for another time, but people who are not aware of what I just said tend to lump golf into one category. And, and this has really been a problem. Uh, I'll tell you, it's a problem in my world when I work for a municipality and some of the people running the municipality don't understand, let's say, when golf needs a little subsidy in the way of money, well, why should we fund golf? Right. Uh, that's an elitist sport played only by, you know, this type of person. Well, what a shame. That's, that's misguided. No, I agree. No. Yeah, it's misguided. Yeah, yet, I agree. Yet we, yet we fund the swimming pools, we fund the libraries, we fund the public park, we right. fund the, the trails. And I understand that, and I'm all for that. I'm, I'm a huge proponent yeah. of municipalities sure. and states and counties funding recreation. But I'll tell you. Oh, what, no question. Yep, I, in the United States, golf is very rarely funded anymore by municipalities and it used to be in the 60s and 70s that's the way we built public golf courses is we funded them and then guess what they made a lot of money and we built police stations and libraries and parks and dog parks and we improved roads sometimes with the money that we made off of golf courses so um i don't know i think it was a shame that there's no there's no question i agree with you Yeah. yeah yeah Yeah, well, listen, I I think that it was racist. I'm just going to call it for what it is. I think it's a shame that there are minorities that uh, have a higher rate of of contracting the virus in certain parts of the country. That needs to be addressed. That has absolutely nothing to do with people that are playing golf, no matter what their skin color is. Listen, uh, Forrest, I appreciate you making your case. I I tend to agree with you. I just don't like the fact that some country clubs are open, and yet we have all these public courses that are forced to close down. I think that's very unfair to everybody that plays golf, quite frankly. I think they all should be open, so we are on the same side on this one. Forrest, I appreciate you taking some time to join us and stating the case. You did a, a very good job eloquently at doing that, and we appreciate you taking some time to join us. Thank you. Well, thank, thanks for having me on. And the other thing I'd say to your governor and the people of Nevada is golf courses employ people, too. So let's get America back to work. No, you're right. Okay. Thank yeah, you very much. Thanks a lot, Forrest. Appreciate Take that. Care, thank guys. you very much, Forrest. He is the vice Be president good. of American Society. Take care, Forrest. Uh, Thank you. You too. Vice President of the American Society of Golf Course Architects.